Grace and peace. Can I be heard, Brother D? I cannot hear you. Uh, unmute you might. Uh, sorry, yeah. go ahead now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. Shabbat oh, Shalom, Brother Sean, and to all the brethren and sistren. Yes, brethren and sistren. If you can please hear us, type in a seven in the chat. Shabbat Shalom, Billy. James. Andrea, Carice, Johnny, Brother Javed, Auntie Elma, and all others who are on who I can't see. One love, bless up to the family, my children as well. Carice, Andrea, James, yeah, all right, let's move. As always, all, right. all praise and glory to Jawa Father and his only begotten son, Jehoshua the Messiah, the Nazarite, who died for our sins that we may have eternal life. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, holy is your name, Jah. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us out of temptations and deliver and rescue us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and all the glory forever. In the name and the authority of your son, Jehoshua, the Messiah, our savior, we pray. So, so be it. Praise Jah. Today's date is the 21st day of the second month, Ziff, for the Jubilee year, 6224 from creation. It's also equivalent to Gregorian date, March 30th, 2024. And this is the fourth Sabbath to the count of Pentecost. When we look at our 28-year cycle, here we are on calendar number eight. It's a Jubilee year. And it's a common year as well. When we look at Jazir Liyamanak, we can see that this is the date right here again. It's the 21st day of the second month. And I always want to remind everyone that when we talk about the Most High's calendar, the equinoxes, the solstices, all those are the middle of the Most High seasons, and they are not the beginning of the seasons. Those are astronomical seasons. The Most High seasons are scriptural, and in particular, they're solar. And so if you want to learn about solar seasons, you can do your search on that yourself. But the equinoxes and the sources, as I say, and this is probably one of the big main errors that most calendar dissidents come to is that they believe that this is the beginning of the seasons, but they're the middle. Here we are again on the 21st. It's the fourth Sabbath, day 28 for this count. We are now past mid spring and going into the latter half of spring. Looking at our three-month spring or latter rain season from a bib, February, March, and April, we can see that where we are now is we're on the 21st, where the arrow is, right? 21st, it's the fourth Sabbath, and we've got one, two, three more to go, and then we have the Feast of Pentecost. And let's always remember that, you know, the waving of the sheaf, or called the first of the first fruits, the sheaf wave has to be on the first day of the week. It can't be on any other day of the week. And it has to be after the Passover um, festival because it's the day after the Sabbath that way, which is the first day of the week. And we know it's referring to the Passover week. Mm -hmm. Now, scripture objectives are by far the most important and most valuable of all. So let's consider the scripture objective of wisdom. King Solomon, one of the wisest, richest, and most famous men who ever lived, said these words. Proverbs, 7, Proverbs 4, verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. So it's very important to get wisdom, as we can see here. It's the principal thing. For if you don't have wisdom, you know you, you won't be able to really function properly. And I de definitely know that there's different levels of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But it's important for us to seek wisdom from the Most High. And remember, you have to go to Him for it. Proverbs 8, verse 11. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. So make sure you have an understanding about this idea of wisdom, it's more precious than anything you can buy. It's more precious than any material things. I mean, I think it's it's by wisdom you can obtain material things if you really look at it that way. But it, it's very precious. It's better to be a wise person than to be a rich fool. That's right. Proverbs 16, verse 16. 
How much better is it to get wisdom than gold? So these are the things that we should be, should be seeking, right? We can see the value of wisdom. It's more precious than any of these material things that you can get on the earth. Proverbs 19, verse 8. He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. So very important. And all of these verses are pretty much straightforward, but these are verses that are supposed to prompt you and exhort you to go and seek wisdom and to humble ourselves before the Most High as we seek it. Come to Him, learn, study, and ask Him for His spirit of wisdom. Now these are powerful words, but again, what is exactly wisdom? The scriptures abound with what wisdom can do for a person, what it's worth, and what benefits wisdom brings, and from where wisdom can be attained. But again, what is wisdom? Job 28, verse 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of Jah, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. So great things here that we can see, fearing the Most High and departing from evil. Now, some, you know, skeptics, when they get into fearing the Most High, saying, you shouldn't be afraid of your father. You know, Jah is love and all of that. But if, you know, the father is our parent, you know, we love our parents, but we do know that when we cross them, that we can fear them, right? Mm -hmm. We're also supposed, supposed to be in reverence of them as well. So fear doesn't mean like you're supposed to, you know, go in a corner and start, you know, crumbling up that way. But you are supposed mm -hmm. to, you know, be fearful of the Most High because truth of the matter is, I think the scripture says somewhere, it's a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living Jah. So That's we right. must fear him. Our life is in his hands. Psalms 111, verse 10. The fear of Jah is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. That's right. So again, you see now, fearing Jah, departing from evil, also leads us to keeping his commandments. And this is something that I, knew, I do know many people teach, and especially are becoming very aware of these things, and it's very important to do that. But as we get into today's lesson, it's good that, you know, teachers teach the commandments. However, just like ancient Israel, we have to know that even though people teach the commandments and whatnot, we have to be very careful still and put them to the test that way, because mm -hmm. people will be liars, just like the devil. That's right. Proverbs 9, verse 10. The fear of Jah is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So learn from Jah. Seek him with all your heart, mind, body, and soul as it develops into love. right? And hold on to him and never let go. And most importantly, just ask him and ask in humbleness. Deuteronomy 4 verse 6. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. We shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So we can see right off the bat here, right? The wisdom is keeping just statutes, his commandments. That's mm -hmm. a part of wisdom. And this is what he says to his Israelite people, right? This is going to be their understanding that they're going to have these wise commandments that separate clean from, you know, unclean, so to speak, uh, good from evil, life and death. And they bring us closer to the most high. So at the same time, though, when we keep these commandments, remember, we got to do them out of love and faith. You don't just keep them like a robot and thinking that this is what's going to get you into the kingdom, but it's a part of pleasing the Most High. Ezra 7, verse 25. And thou, Ezra, after the wisdom of thy El that is in thine hand, set magistrates and judges, which may judge all the people that are beyond the river, all such as know the law of thy Jah, and teach ye them, that know them not. So it's important for us to teach these laws, commandments and statutes. And when we're teaching these commandments and statutes, it's a part of the wisdom of the Most High. You see, people are not born wise. None of us instinctively fears the Creator. In fact, the very opposite is true. The human heart, yours, mine, and everyone else's, and our heart is our mind it also, it's, it's corrupt by nature, right? This is the stunning scriptural verdict on the human heart, the mind. It's deceitful and desperately wicked. Jeremiah 17, verse 9. The heart or the mind is, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Romans 8, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Jah, for it is not subject to the law of Jah, neither indeed can be. 
So this is our human nature, yours and ours, right? But as we move through, and this human nature usually controls us for our, our first early years in life, up to 20, and it all depends on whether we've been schooled or learned or guided in the wisdom of the Most High. But if most of us have been in another religion, Christianity, we're not really dealing with the Most High. We've been in our carnal ways for so long. And these are the ways that are against the Most High's laws, against his ways of love, and it's usually focused on self. So if you know that in your life, you have to examine yourself and it's like it's always about you and everything's about your feelings and you don't kind of see your faults or you're not really seeking the most high in terms of humbling yourself, then you got to go back. You got to repent and check again because our carnal mind, our heart, it's wicked. And even though we might know certain truths, it wants to do evil. Now, if you want wisdom, you must ask Jah for it. He's the root of wisdom, and he's eager to give wisdom to the true and humble believer if they ask for it. Ask, and you shall receive, says the Most High. Luke 11, verse 13. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? That's right. So here's the promise. Right? If you call Jah your father and you recognize his son as well, then you ask the father for these things. Now, remember, the father is going to be probing your mind, your heart, your desires, your reins to see you know, why are you seeking wisdom? Is it for some selfish reasons? Is it for pride or whatever it is? Or is it are you seeking it to help yourself grow, to help others, to learn of the most high and to share these truths with others and humbly walk with him? Because that's what it's all about. Sometimes when we pray, if you find that you're being too selfish, right, and you you know you got to check out your motives. If it's for selfish reasons, or if it's something that might be a worldly like type of um, prayer, so to speak, don't pray that way. Just pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, strength to walk in His ways, open up His words to you, right, and so that you can be a light to others and guide them. But you must ask Him, and you must ask in faith. James one verse five. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of Jah, that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So again, all we have to do is ask. Jeremiah 9 verse 24. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am Jah, which exerciseth loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Most High. So this is our glory that we start to learn and know and learn of Jah, right? Come close to him that way. This is, you know, this is not glory to sh show others because guess what? Everybody in the world, you know, especially in North America, Christian or not, reading the Bible, everybody's, you know, God's friend and they have prayers on social media and everybody's trying to reach out and kind of trying to be a light to everybody else out there. However, though, the understanding is not there for most people. And I think my the scripture says my people are destroyed uh, for lack of knowledge, right? Yes. So, yes, they have the zeal and everybody believes in the most high, the creator. But the scriptures go on to say that even the devils believe and tremble. So your belief in a creator and in the son, although that is good, you have to believe on them and in them that way, right? Trusting, following their words, keeping the father's commandments as well as the Messiah's commandments. Because the Messiah gave us commandments and he tells us that we're supposed to keep them. But I think a lot of us kind of just focus on the 10 in the in the, in the old covenant writing, so to speak. And don't look at these uh, kind of magnified commandments that the Messiah gave us. He gave us commandments that control our thinking. And that's very mm -hmm. important because that's where sin starts and that's where it resides. That's right. The wisdom comes from above, from the eternal L of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the source of wisdom, the root. To obtain wisdom, one must ask him for it. You cannot buy wisdom. You can't, you know, kind of bribe him into it. It's priceless. And this is why Jah gives it on request, and it's free of charge. Now, of course, when you get this wisdom, it doesn't come overnight. It's right? not something that you, you ask Jah for wisdom. Then what he's going to do is he's going to give you a spirit of wisdom and make you interested in his word. And as you start to seek the word and study and learn and obey, your wisdom will increase. And that's what it's all about. Your wisdom increasing. Don't look for miracles. And definitely, as we're talking about this lesson here, you know, stop looking for physical signs in your life of the Most High that He's with you, around you, doing something. Because the Father doesn't like that. And the Messiah shows us that, you know, the Father doesn't like those things. Although 
we're stubborn. We just want to have this kind of confirmation in our mind somewhere physically to say, oh, the Most High is around me. He's with me. He exists. It's not going to work like that. I think the Most High calls that an evil generation that seeks after a sign. That's right. So you can't attend a university or secular college and sign up for a course on wisdom. So again, how do we get this wisdom? The scriptures provide the answer. We ask and also make sure that we apply it. First Chronicles 22, verse 12. Only Jah give thee wisdom and understanding and give thee charge concerning Israel that thou mayest keep the law of Jah thy El. Proverbs 2, verse 6. For Jah giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. That's right. He's the source. Daniel 2, verse 23. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou El of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might. So always make sure that you have gratitude. And remember, the little wisdom that you might have, you don't compare it to somebody else's wisdom at all because you'll fail. You just want to make sure that you're on a steady path of growing and you're going to be appreciative. And also you're going to just show that you appreciate job by doing the work. Right? These are times that are very crucial. The internet, social media is taking up a lot of people's time. I mean, I'm witnessing myself. Like I never used to be able to, you know, I used to say stuff about these short little videos and short little clips, but I'm finding, and I'm glad I don't have TikTok because these things, these things are like addictive, like drugs. And if you can look yeah. at yourself, you say, oh, I'm just going to only watch this little one short clip that they send you. And it might be a little bit of interest, but then it goes into a whole heap of folly. And before you know it, you blink, you've spent an hour watching yeah. pretty much foolishness. And you can't even really remember or recall it, you know, unless, of course, maybe you saw it again. And so all this time is being wasted with nobody really reading. I mean, the basic old school reading from the book. And if you want to use your phone, that's fine. But I wouldn't get too attached to reading the Bible from your phone all the time because what happens if you don't have a phone, right? Or anything of that nature. Exactly. So I really believe it's important. There's more important now than ever before to read. And I know that many people do read. And because many people read, they're putting out videos like ourselves. But this is supposed to help and guide you. So, yes, we have a teaching ministry. We're leading people. But you have to do your due diligence in order for you to um, be able to personally grow from it. I'll strengthen you and other people in the world who are doing the messages will strengthen you, but you got to continually dig deep, you know, like do the push-ups. You got to do the work. And that's very important for you to do. So ask Jah, believe in him, fear him, and, you know, ask in faith that you will get wisdom and stay on that path. That's right. <clears throat> Go ahead, D. First Corinthians, verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of Jah, the world by wisdom knew not Jah. It pleased Jah by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. All right, we Padre, there for one quick, quick sec, D. Mm -hmm. So you know, in this area here, we see that Jews, Israelites, you know, kind of like, you know, symbolic for the sheep family, the black people, and the Gentiles, the Greeks, they seek wisdom, philosophy. You know, they want it to be reasoned out where when it comes to, you know, dealing with the Mosai, there's a difference. People want to see signs. Come down from the cross, they said. Uh, what sign do you show? And even though he gave them many miracles and many signs, the people still didn't, still didn't believe. So it's good to understand, you know, this approach to seeking wisdom of the Most High. Continue, D. Verse 23. But we preach the Messiah crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, the Messiah, the power of Jah, and the wisdom of Jah. Because the foolishness of Jah is wiser than men, and the weakness of Jah is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. That's right. You know, when's the last time you really heard honest and truly of you know, big celebrities and big kings and politicians kind of you know, getting into the wisdom of the Most High. You know, it's, it's very rare. And even though they have all things and all power, the Most High likes to use what the world would call foolish things or the small things to overpower them. And that might be just people like you and I, you know, not very highly educated in this world or anything and, you know, not looked upon as anything great, but the Father with, you know, his mercy, love, and grace will give us this wisdom so that we will conquer, you know, these mighty empires this way. And it doesn't mean conquering them and ruling right now because that's the Messiah's job. But 
by putting out the messages here, as they say, you know, somewhere in Jamaica, we chant down Babylon, right? Mm -hmm. you know, bring them down and let them know that their time is up. But at the same time, family, it's so important to let us also see our, our sins. When the Messiah came on the earth, he said, you know, he, he came to Israel and he showed them their sins. And the scriptures say somewhere like, spare not, cry aloud, show my people their sins. So for my ministry, I know that you know, as long as you have the internet, I've went through my years of watching what all the Gentiles have wickedly done to us. I mean, the list goes on. Like, science experiments, diseases putting in people. And by no means of the imagination am I saying, you know, allow it. But I'd rather show us our sins so that we can repent. We have many people in the world who are going to you know, talk about what these Gentiles do. And the more I see it sometimes, I try to wonder, does it bring me closer to John? Or does it just make me try to almost hate them more, right? And we know that not all, you know, Gentiles are like those wicked ones that are out there, that there are that some that seek righteousness, and we read of them in the scriptures. So just be very careful where your mind frame is at. And I know you, many of us come from a, a rough background where we've seen the Gentiles and the heathens treat us away and still will. But um, just stick to Jah, and you'll give you a maturity and a wisdom and the comfort to not let these things bother you and just to move forward and work on the mission that you're supposed to be working on. One thing that stands out in verse 26 is um, it says, For ye see your calling, brethren and sistren. We have to be able to see that we've been called because if not many people are called in the world, then we have to acknowledge that we've been called to seek Jah in, in this faith here. And if you acknowledge that you've been called, then you, you should be able to take this calling very seriously because this is a call to eternal life. This is a call to the wedding banquet of the Most High. Mm -hmm. So we have to be able to acknowledge that, that we have received a calling. That's right. It is a calling, a convocation, it also says somewhere else. Well said. Let me just do something here for a second. The, you know, I don't like to show my, I like my mind to come in properly. All right, let's continue. First Corinthians. It's the same one from last time. So will it, did I show it? I didn't even show it from here, did I? What was it? First Corinthians. Um, I know somebody's going to find it in the room. You can put it in the room, uh, in the chat, and let me know, and I'll make sure I update it for later. But First Corinthians something. <laughs> yeah. Verse 27. But Jah has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and Jah has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath Jah chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. So this is what I was talking about. The Father's not using some big mighty men out there and all of that. He's using those who are humble. It says here the base things, the weak things, the foolish things. And you know, we know we're not foolish, but to the world, right? They were, you know, even when the Messiah came, you know, he wasn't one that was accepted. Looked like he was unlearned in the scriptures and everything. And you know how the world don't like, you know, the dreadlocks thing. And he's coming with a Nazarite look and looking, you know, just like, uh, you know, looking low. They looked down upon the Messiah. But it's this is what the Most High uses to bring down um, great, you know, strongholds, so to speak, of, of falsehood. That's so, right. You know, don't think of yourself just because you're not some type of specially educated person. Or just not looking at those qualities. He's looking at the qualities of your mind, your heart, your sincerity, your truth, your zeal, and most importantly, your faith. That's right. There's many examples in scripture that show you that Jah just uses the small things to bring down big things. Mm -hmm. A young boy named David taking down a giant as a one man. Using small numbers of arm, using small numbers of soldiers to take down huge um, armies. So, Jah is always going to show us that we don't. He doesn't need big things to take down big things, it's like a small axe chopping down a big tree. That's all Jah needs. Mm -hmm. That's it. Andrea just gave us it is First Corinthians chapter one. So that's what probably got me confused. I probably saw First Corinthians and it was one, and I just left out the okay. other one. Thank chapter you, Andrea. One continue d verse 29 that no flesh should glory in his presence but of him are ye in the messiah joshua who
who have jaws made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in Jah. That's right. This is our glory and it's humble. Brother Billy says, yes, the pursuit of truth is action. It's not passive. We're not sitting down here. We're not spectators watching anything. We're participators and in a great way. Dielectric tries to let us know 666. Hey, that's all right for you. If you want to deal with that, that's cool. Let's move on. So make sure you're testing the spirits, right? Checking this to make sure that they're of the truth because there's many spirits, many doctrines, and people out there. The scriptures give many keys to understanding how to test the spirits in order to determine if a person, a spirit, a doctrine, or influence is good or evil. But almost all opposition to the Father and His Son, Jehoshua the Messiah, and the children of Jah comes from, in, from the influence of evil spirits. It's extremely important for Jah's people to be able to discern the difference between good and an evil spiritual influence. And I know that many people think that they can, but you'd be surprised. The devil is a great deceiver. And if he's already deceived us many times on many things, don't think he's going to be stopping to work right now. 2 Timothy 4 verse 2. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. So here we are. And although I, I talked about this, this uh, prophetical warning that the solar eclipse is giving us, it itself isn't giving us that, but it's, it's letting us see that there's, we are in prophetical time frames. We're in the time frame that the Messiah says false prophecies and evil people will show fake signs or use natural signs to deceive people, all of these things. And this is the time frame that we're in, and it's only going to increase. And I'll say this, if anybody, I don't care if it's an eclipse time, the Messiah is not coming in our lifetime. Yeah, I know. You know, that's going to be hard for people to swallow, but he's not. And you might say, how can I say that? There's a lot that has to go on. We have an understanding of prophetical time frames. And we're not trying to say we know when he is going to come. Not even he knows the, the day or the hour that the Father's going to say, you know, go forth. But there's great signs. And I mean, he gives these gives us these signs so that we'll know not to follow the fake signs, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about. Now, there's deceptive spirits, and we know about this. And the Messiah is rebuked to leaders about their, about, of their, about their false religious beliefs and practices, their sinfulness, and their conspiracy to murder him. He notes that the devil is the father of lies. John 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar. And the father of it. So a lie is an is a, is an untruth. It's the opposite of truth. And one of the you know scariest lies are the ones that kind of have a half truth, and that's what the devil likes to use. Because when you use a all out blatant truth, for the most part, people who have a little bit of sense you know won't fall for it. But if you mix up that drink with just a little bit of poison, right? You know, and there's no smell to it. It might seem like there's nothing wrong. It's it's a pure thing, but it's still deceptive. So this is what it comes down to. People lie. Or people have inherited lies and they believe them. And we are in these times. There's many people who are in lies. And these times here we're also in is that many people are coming out of the lies, out of the false religions, into the truth. Verse 45. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. See, this same evil spirit that makes truth with error in order to deceive Eve and cause her and Ad caused her and Adam to rebel against Jah. This is that spirit, right? And the Messiah is telling us here that, hey, he's telling us what the truth is. He's talking the truth. The devil speaks lies. And remember, he's also the same spirit being who, with other evil spirits, is deceiving the whole world politically, philosophically, astronomically, and spiritually today. And I say astronomically because you know, people are caught up into the signs of the heavens right now. That's right. Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, 
which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation 12, 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of Jah, and have the testimony of Joshua the Messiah. Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Jah and the faith of Joshua. So when we look at these verses, we see that a part of the great deception is to make people be in continually breaking the Most High's commandments, whether ignorantly or purposely or not. That's what his goal is. And this is where the deception comes in, whether it's giving you false calendars, false doctrines, sending you false prophets, leaders, and teachers. All of these things are designed to move you away from the Messiah and to stop you from you know, keeping those commandments and having the faith of the Messiah. So you know... If anyone, any, but especially Christendom is all is a, is a big time mainstream Christianity is, is big time in the lie that you know you're not under the law and all of that kind of stuff, basically saying you don't have to keep the commandments anymore, and that's a lie, right? That's a that's a big lie, and you know they're gonna get hurt for that because they they forward it and they teach it, and then they say that the people who say to keep the commandments and have the faith of the Messiah that those people are, are deceived and they're lying. So this is how this battle is going to go. I'm, I'll be calling on many people false prophets. And many people will be saying, hey, Brother Sean and Brother David, they're false prophets too. And we're just going to have to live with these things. And like I said before, we've got to test the spirits to see if these things are so. That's right. Now, the scriptures contain many warnings about false prophets and their false prophecies, doctrines, and miracle working powers. The sun, moon, and stars are an ex explicable wonders attributed to the natural and supernatural. But because men and women are greatly fascinated with these signs in the heavens and the end times, the agents of darkness use them to bolster error and lead people away from obeying and having faith in Jah and his son Jehoshua. The fact is, falsehood can't stand up on its own. It needs a spectacular demonstration and some gimmicks to impress the fickle human mind. Truth, on the other hand, is found in the scriptures, particularly in the commandments of Jah and his son, which specify how we humans should live. The prophets of the Almighty always teach Jah's law and faith in the Messiah and warn of punishment to those who disobey Jah's words. Now, like I said, people like these heavenly signs, and although they're spoken of in scriptures, it's good to understand how to use these signs and what to look for and what's not the sign of the coming and all of that. So again, there's a prophetical warning about the false teachers and prophets, false prophets, a prophetical warning about false prophets and teachers. And this is what it's about. So as you know, by now, I teach and greatly will show that, well, I guess nobody can't show anything until April 8th comes and goes and maybe a few months pass by because they know that anything that happens after April 8th, it could be days later, it could be small, it could be six months later, they're going to say, oh yeah, it's because of that eclipse, but... Mm -hmm. No way. Not at all. Matthew 24, verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So we got two things here. The sign of his coming along with the end of the world. And yes, they are simultaneous, but... There's kind of like a, you know, a difference between them. There's the end times is covered under his coming and, of course, the judgment and all of that. Verse 4. Verse 4. And Jehoshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and shall deceive many. So there's kind of two aspects to this, and I say this quite a bit, but it's good that you know. First, the deception is that's going to be the greatest, and you can see it on the world, is that many are coming in the Messiah's name. They're coming in his authority. They could be using the name Jesus, Joshua, Yahweh, Yehoshua, Yeshaya. It doesn't matter what they are using, but they're going to come and say, hey, this is the Messiah. This is him. We should love him and worship him and all of that, but they're going to deceive many. And you can see that that's what's happening. So there's false gospels. There's false messiahs out there. False Christ, if you want to say it. But there's not like there are other people. Like there's really another gospel. But these are false because they don't deal with what is true. 
There isn't right. really another Messiah, as we know, but people teach a Messiah that may say, you know, you can do all kind of lawlessness that way. Or they may teach a Messiah that says, hey, it's, it's kind of like a Gentile, European, uh, white power supremacy type of thing. We know there's an issue that way. Then we can have the other, you know, where it's like a black power, only this and that issue. And that, you know, that's another piece of folly. But the truth is, Israelites were, were black, Messiah's black, he's a Nazarite, but all people, white, black, Chinese, Asian, if they seek righteousness in the Messiah, keep the commandments of the Most High, they become engrafted into Israel through the Messiah. And that's only going to be a few, right? A few in terms of the amount of people that are not going to believe that way. So we have to be very careful. This is what it's talking about. It's not just saying that a person's going to come, like if I came to you and said, hey, I'm the Christ. You know, that, that's going to happen as well. But it's not going to be more than, you know, or let's put it this way. That sets off uh, alarm bells quickly. But when people say, hey, I deal with the commandments. I deal with the Messiah. It's like, okay, well, you can, you can let your guard down. But you got to still be aware because the deception will still come in. That's right. You see, these deceivers... They acknowledge that there's a Messiah, but they don't teach the truth about who the true Messiah is. Mm -hmm. And they don't even teach his commandments and ignore them. Verse 6. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. That's right. Can you see what it says there, D? It looks like it's... Uh, at it's, the bottom? It's, yeah, it's, it's hard to see, right? It's a yeah, it's it's the tops that cut off a bit here. Yeah, I just noticing something about that. Let me um take a look at that too. I don't, I'm trying to figure out why it's saying that. Uh, what were we just reading? Matthew 24, right? Yes. Uh, there it is. And home. Okay, I'll just let it go that way. And you can then read the last verse, verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Okay, so let's just quickly look at this. There's an order here. You're going to hear wars, rumors of wars, but we're told not to be troubled. So none of these things bother you. Everybody's going to be attacking everybody and all of that. But it says here, be not troubled. These things have to come to pass. The end is not yet. That's right. So I noticed that people talking about wars all the time. And it's been happening probably for the last hundred years or since even maybe a little bit later since World War I, so to speak. Um, nation rising against nation, famines, pestilence. All these things are here. But it says it's not the end. It's the beginning of sorrows. And this is where we are. We're in the beginning of sorrows area. and probably have been for maybe the last, maybe at least the last hundred years for sure. Mm -hmm. That, you know, it's not the end. It's the beginning of the end, if you want to call it that. And like I said before, people want, you know, you know, the judgment to come quick and want to see the most high come and everything. But uh, you know, be careful. And hopefully, you know, we are on that good side when he comes. But <clears throat> I have to say, though, you know, just be you know, be aware that there's going to be many false prophets and they're going to come and they're going to deceive. And the word here is many. And we're flooded with them right now. That's right. And when Joshua says, ye be not troubled, that's what he means. Because when they show these things on the news and everything, it's like they want the population to be troubled. They want you to be fearful. And Joshua's giving us his sure word to not be troubled at these things. That's right. Now, one thing is that when you look at some of these prophecies, what I want to say here is that, you know, when Messiah is talking a certain prophecy that we're just reading in Matthew 24 there, that's that's dealing with a little bit something that's happening at that time before 70 AD and then for the future. So it's like a dual prophecy. And 
some parts of it is is fulfilled in 70 AD by the destruction of the temple, and some parts of it extend into the future. And this is something I just want you to know. I'm not going to go into it today, but prophecies can also have a, a dual application that way, and especially if the Messiah is talking directly to the apostles, because you'll say something to them when this happens, when that happens, and it's in their lifetime. But then on a grander scale, it's going to happen in well, not, I won't say in our lifetime, but in these last days, so to speak, but it's going to be on a worldly scale rather than just on a scale of just Jerusalem being destroyed and that tribulation. The tribulation will be greater on the earth. So again, the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in 70 AD by the Romans and the persecution of the Israelites at that time is what it is referring to. Again, you have to read very selectively. But still, everything applies. Don't let nobody deceive you. Continuing. Verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. All right. So we got a true gospel being preached to all the world, right? The love of many shall wax cold, and right—that's the love of the Most High and the love towards neighbor. I think this—they um, call that word agape, but the agape. word um, "waxing cold." That phrase there—I think it. I think the the one word for the phrase is psycho. <laughs> psycho. Uh, yeah, yeah, like psycho, like you know, like psychotic kind mm. of thing, um, and it means to to be psychotic also means to be. It's almost like a psycho. It's a person who's cold towards other human beings. And this is why they can do all these bad things to them and they have no feelings about it. But just a related word that way. Yeah. So we see, again, you have to endure to the end. The gospel is going to be preached and there's a little bit more. And just before we continue on, look at where all this stems from. And because iniquity shall abound, and then it mm -hmm. goes into all these things. So sin is going to increase more and more as we go get closer to the end. And the breaking of Jah's commandments, we're going to witness more and more. Yes, that's very true. Good point. Verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is the Messiah, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false messiahs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they should see, deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. That's right. Don't do anything. Don't go nowhere. Don't try to be some kind of, you know, mysticism when it comes to the messiah and all of that just believe the messiah's words because he's telling us that these times are very deceptive and so we can see that the prophecies are fulfilling and just you know as more solar eclipses come and go throughout the earth and they all over the earth every time one comes up or something like that you will have a set of people always thinking this is the one or so to speak but that's not how the most high moves at all especially when you start to read his word and understand the prophecies when things come on the scene in terms of prophetical events, it's suddenly. And he'll give signs of certain things of judgment, but these signs are sudden. They're not going to be like a predicted, you know, annular, total, or partially solar eclipse, which is um, basically it's a natural phenomenon that occurs yeah. sometimes twice a year in different parts of the earth. Exactly. <clears throat> when, God, when God does these signs that he speaks about in, in Revelation in, in prophetical times, these things are going to occur without notice. That's right. Right? They're not going to be predicted like how these um, uh, eclipses so, are already mm -hmm. already mapped out and we're already looking for it. Oh, so on this certain certain date, this is coming. There won't be nothing of the sort. It's going to take people by surprise. That's right. Eclipses are predicted phenomena. They have been predicted for 500 years, probably from the times of Egypt. Man knew these things a long time ago. It's just a thing that you know. And they occur all the time throughout history. And there are some special type of uh, moments in history, scriptural history, we can see that the Most High intervenes with certain signs in the sun, moon, and stars. 
<clears throat> I think it's in in King Ahaz days or Ahaziah. The sun went backwards ten degrees in Joshua's time. The sun and the moon stood in the, in the sky for you know twelve uh, a whole day, so to speak. I should call it that way. So these there are these things that are show Jah's power, but the phenomena of eclipses, and we'll cover that quickly soon. You know, it's just it's just natural. We're not supposed to look at it and be dismayed at it, if I may say that. Mm -hmm. Joshua is giving us some great warnings in that last um, chapter, verse in 24, where he says, Behold, I have told you before, he wants us to not be deceived by these false messiahs and false prophets. Because look what they're going to do in verse 24. It says, show great signs and wonders. These people are going to do things that are going to deceive many people. That's right. <clears throat> and what's nice, D, is you brought up this, this word wonder right here. Means a prodigy or a, a portent. I, I never even heard of these words, but I checked them out. Mm. But this is, you know, something that, according accordingly, something so strange as to cause it to be watched or observed. Ooh. So when I'm, t you know, kind of looking at this understanding here, a false prophet, well, as they get into the future, they're going to be able to like call fire and do certain things. But they're also a part of like saying, "Hey, look at that sign in the heavens." That means he's coming. That's a false prophecy. You understand? Even if it's a local yes. thing. So if somebody's pointing to this eclipse as the beginning of the end, a sign of the end, or anything of that nature, they're deceived, first of all, number one, making it up or lying. And if I'm wrong, then Messiah comes the time after. That's fine. I'm, I'm not losing faith. I'm not telling nobody not to repent or anything of that nature. And maybe times like this, it helps pe draw people closer because they're kind of fearful. But then what happens when these things kind of wear off, right? You know, after a while. But I want to look at the, a couple of these words here. Um, prodigy and uh, portent. We're going to see them mm -hmm. in, a, in a definition soon. But let's continue. Okay. Verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So when the Messiah comes on the scene, it ain't going to be something that's going to be seen only in parts of America and Canada. That's silly right off the bat. It says here, the light that comes out of the east. What light comes out of the east? The sun. The sun. Right? And where does it shine on to? The west, right? That's so right. When, when these things happen, let's put this, when the sun, when the stars do darken, it's all over the earth. It's not going to be like, just the small part here. And uh, I like how um, Billy, even though I have this Messiah too, Billy brings up the, the similarity to when the Messiah died on, on the stake, on the pole. That's right. You know, there was darkness for three hours. That wasn't no solar eclipse. That's People right. To, I've watched so much videos on this thing here, family. Yeah. I've only seen about one or two Good people point. kind of speak upright, you know? Good point. And that, mm. wasn't, uh, that wasn't predicted either. Nobody knew that was coming. No. And it was lasted for like in three hours. That wasn't a solar eclipse. Like David said, it wasn't predicted. These are this is the most high intervening, just like that. It's a great point, Billy. Um, and something yet yeah, I definitely noted as well. So we're looking for a big event, a worldwide event. The Messiah is telling you this. The the sign is like an, it's gonna be from the east to the west. We're all gonna see it, family. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So we have, you know, a little bit more details about this prophecy, you know. But you see that there's going to be a tribulation before the sun and moon are darkened, right? I mean, you know, the solar eclipse, there's no tribulation going on now. I mean, we're all going through tribulation on the earth, but... When you look around the earth right now, yes, there are calamities. America, in, in particular, America is kind of wondering what the heck's going on here. We've been so wicked for so long, watching the economy. We just came over that thing that they put in your arms and all of that stuff. And it looks really bad, but I want to tell our American family, brothers, yo, hold tight. And even if America does kind of, so to speak, fall, you know, it's not about your eternal life being lost or anything of that nature. But, you know, I don't think America... Um, from outside looking in, and all from the inside looking out, it looks like catastrophic. But you know, 
stick with things, keep praying. There's many people I believe in states that are, you know, repent and follow the most high. And there's many evils over there too. But, you know, just look a little bit bigger than just America is what I'm saying. There's a lot going on. And when you've seen the prophecy, it's kind of like encompassing a lot of other nations um, as well. And so it's just not good to just stay focused on this one thing. Some people teach that America will fall and this is what it has to deal with. All right. I don't even think it has anything to do with that at all either, but, you know, these are things. And the last thing I want to say is about these others, you know, the stars falling from heaven. And I've already heard people already talking about these stars falling from heaven again are going to be the fallen angels coming back and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so sad. But let's continue, D. Verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. But of that day and hour knoweth no man know, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. That's right. So again, it's going to be a worldwide e event, people, right? And you can see it's going to come upon people suddenly. Now the saints at that time, yes, they're going to have an understanding that the time is near. But again, they won't be able to, let's put it this way. When the sign, the prophetical event happens, the saints will know what that is. So That's it's, right. this is not like um, they're going to be looking forward to like, all right, Judd's going to tell them, hey, this is when the sun, moon, and stars are going to darken and, and all of that stuff. No, when it happens, the people who are believers, true believers, will know why it's happening. So this is different than a solar eclipse says, we see it coming. And I can, you know, not I can predict, anybody can predict. Go to Wikipedia, type in solar eclipse, and you got all of them for the next 100 years. And all of the ones that passed by for the last 300 years. So it's like something completely different when the Most High is doing things. The great event will happen. People of the world will think it's something else. But the saints will know that this is the nearness of the time. That's right. And you have to mark Joshua's words. There's an order of thing, of, of when... And how these things occur. Look what it says. It says immediately after the tribulation, then these right. things will be darkened. That's right. Right. So you have to mark when these things occur. And if you know Jah's words, then you'll understand it. But the heathen, when they see these things, <laughs> will be in complete dismay. That's right. Mm -hmm. Luke 21, verse 7. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah. And the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. Wow. You see that one, D? Yeah. But at the time, it says, Many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah. So they're going to tell the truth. He's Mashiach, right? But look at this. And the time draws near. He says, go not after them. I mean, don't follow them. Don't listen to them. That's right. This is exactly what's happening right now. So you see. Don't get prophecy, carried away with what they're saying. That's right. So the prophecy is being fulfilled, you know, by seeing these signs in the solar eclipse and all of these kind of things. And it's just exposing, you know, the people's fickled mind, whoever is not, not in tune with things. And so any people and Israelites and Gentiles are doing this together seem to be wanting to have some big thing about and using the stars and all these kind of things to try to, you know, talk about prophecy. I mean, the last time the, the, I, I checked out about prophecy or learning doctrines, he said, put line upon line. He didn't say put line upon constellation and line upon, you know. That's right. You know, all these things. It's line upon line. And just because there's going to be signs in the sun, moon, and stars, when they happen, we will know about them. But they're not going to be predicted events. That's just right. It's just these, it's these eclipses, these eclipses that are predictable do not override the words of Joshua, our savior. We mark right. these words so that when these things occur, we can discern what 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 we're seeing, whether it's true or false, and what these prophet these false prophets are saying, whether they are true or not. That's right. If you don't take heed to Joshua's words, then you might end up being deceived. And Joshua is telling us in verse 8, take heed that ye be not deceived. Take heed. Mm -hmm. Basically, when people talk about the time draws near. So you're getting this in modern time. And because it's affecting America, 
USA is all up, you know, up in arms about what's going to happen here. Three days of darkness and whatever. And if anything of darkness happens in terms of electricity, you know, it's Babylon. There's not going to be no three days of darkness like the plagues in Egypt and all of that. No way. That's not happening right now or anything of that nature right now. There's a lot that has to happen. And when you don't follow seals and trumpets, man, you're, you're completely out of whack. And this is what's happening. No one ain't following the sequential chronological events because they don't have the true prophetical time frames. They don't. And they're not utilizing them. And we utilize these things. And we know where we are in prophecy. Okay, we're not bragging and boasting about knowing when the Messiah comes. But, you know, we might be the only ones saying it now. Hey, the Messiah is now coming on. The, you see, like right now, right now, this minute. If a baby's born right now, that baby lives to 100 years, the Messiah is still not coming in that 100 years. So everybody who's alive today, everyone, and call it a prophecy if you want, no one's going to see the Messiah come. Not even 144,000 are around. None of that is happening. And people can say, well, we don't agree with you. Okay, well, then we're all going to have to just, you know, put our hands on our head and sit back and twiddle our thumbs and figure out and wait, so to speak. But in the meantime, we're going to be doing Jah's work laboring and knowing the times helps us to do a more effective work than getting people all worked up about something that's not going to occur and they should always be prepared for anyways you don't wait for the messiah to come before you get your life together you get it together now while you have health and strength and all that's going on in your life is not too bad or if it's horrible whatever it is you're doing it so don't follow nobody that's saying this is coming and all those who are saying it man i know it's going to happen that time's going to go and come, and you're going to make up some type of excuse. Well, you know, it's just the time period, and the Allah and the Ta never really worked out that way, and pure folly, as far as I'm concerned, Dean. Yeah, they're, they're not sticking to Joshua's words. They're not sticking to the prophetical time frames that is that Jah has given us in his words. We are living in the times of the Gentiles. We are living in Jacob's troubles, and this... Jacob's troubles is a is a time period that has to be fulfilled first before the end can come. That's right. That's right. And that time period can't be rushed or forwarded. That's right. Continue, D. Verse 9. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. All right. So... I mean, what more can we say? Who do you want to follow, right? You're going to follow the Messiah? You'll know. People will know what's going on at that, those times, right? But it's not the end, man. Trust me. Like, it don't even feel like that to me. I don't know what people say. feel like I don't know what they're seeing. I don't know what they're feeling. Well, they're feeling their feelings. And that's all I can yeah. say. But, you know, we're aware. We're looking at signs. I see great signs about prophecy. But I'm not, they're not in the sun, moon, and stars right now. It's amongst people, false prophets, deceivers. You know, false doctrines and all these kind of things. That's where the, the prophecy is becoming fulfilled. And so we got to be very diligent. I mean, really diligent because the devil is not playing around. He wants us all to be in some type of falsehood. And yes, I know we all pray that the Most High has mercy, that it'll extend past our ignorance and tap into our sincerity. I pray that too. But just don't be lazy about it and, and take this very serious. You know, every day is very serious. You fulfill every day until you, you pass away and you don't know when you're going to die. So don't yeah. bother waiting for prophets and all pretend people trying to tell you when it's coming. And trust me, believe you me, nothing is going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. And I hope people come out to me and the earthquake comes and all these things happen and say, oh, Brother Sean, say, you were false. We were all right all the time. And that's not happening. I feel very confident saying that, <laughs> but let's continue, Brother D. Uh, let me say one thing here. Shalom, Holy One of Israel. Shalom, they say, yeah. Um, this is what is difficult today, sorting out those who teach truth and those who are false prophets, comparing their teaching to Scripture. It is. It's one of the biggest challenges because we're yeah. all saying everybody else is false. <laughs> I get it, too. And this is, where, this is where testing the spirits come in. That's and reading and in. putting precept upon precept, line upon line, we all have to put in work here so that we are we're not deceived. That's right. So I understand that. And this is where we have to kind of wade through the waters and be very careful. And the fact that Joshua says, be not terrified, just shows you that the vast majority of the world will be terrified. That's right. The vast majority of the world will be confused and in fear. 
So we now we're going to be in the min in the minority. That's right. So don't yeah. follow whatever the majority. What don't follow if the majority of the world is saying one thing, then we are then that should tell you something. Exactly. And I mean, you just type in solar eclipse, and I'm pretty sure you saw the little two minute video of hey, it's crossing Nineveh and, and Salem and Rapture Town and yeah. all these yeah, cities. Pure, all of that is unscriptural. Unscriptural. <laughs> some, you cannot read that in scripture boy. at all. Yeah, man. I'm People telling you, man. Liars. Deceptive thing. Not even a script. And everybody falling into it. But let's yeah, let me move on. I don't want to waste too much time talking about that. But man, scripture D. <laughs> Luke 21 verse 10 Then said he unto them Nation shall rise against nation And kingdom against kingdom Sorry And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places And famines and pestilences And fearful sights and great signs Shall there be from heaven But before all these They shall lay their hands on you And persecute you Delivering you up to the synagogues And into prisons Being brought before kings and rulers For my name's sake Verse 25, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon earth distresses of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Right now we're getting a good understanding of how these prophecies will really pl play out and it's going to be in the future. It's some great, great things that you can see. These, there's a there's a, an order here. Verse 25 talks about then there shall be these things, right? And these things, remember, just because the solar eclipse, as, as marvelous as it is, you know, I, I'm going to be out there catching it, and they tell you, don't look at it or you're going to burn out your eyes. Um, <clears throat> I tell you, bubbling is a thing, man. But, yes, be careful. I should say be careful. I don't want to tell nobody. I'm not going to stare at it, but be careful, but. Don't don't look at it and go, wow, Joe is amazing. And look at this. And oh, this you know, looks kind of neat. The place is going to be daytime. It's going to become dark. You're going to see a ring around a, a black sphere, the moon, you know, all of that. You know, <laughs> but it happens. It happens. You know, just when it happens in our area, the local area, everybody's fascinated by it. But it's very, uh, it happens all the time, family. And you just know how the media likes to push things. See, there are some misconceptions concerning who is and who isn't a false prophet. A prophet is one who speaks the words of Jah. He's not just a person that only speaks of what is yet to come. Usually if it's a destruction, like the Israelite prophets, they would come to the people, they would tell them to repent and do something, and if they didn't, then, you know, but they were always there to speak the words of Jah. Unless, of course, Jah chooses to reveal something of that nature through that prophet. And that prophet is, you know, going to pass on the truth. See, a false prophet twists the truth and speaks half-truths. A true prophet speaks the words of truth by the spirit of Jah, and a false prophet speaks lies concerning the truth. A true prophet knows the one of whom he speaks. The false prophet does not know Jah. See, there's something else that you should know concerning false teachers. They don't know that they're false teachers or prophets. They think that they know Jah. They believe and they're sincere that they're close and that they're teaching the truth. But... They have been deceived. And you know what? The way I see it, and this has nothing to do with looking at anybody's personal uh, righteousness or anything of that nature, but however Jah works in your life. But, you know, if, if we have a lot of secret sins in our life, Jah is going to hold back certain things. And those secret sins mean, you know, the things only Jah can see. You know, in front of people, you're good. You show a good face. You speak well. You watch your tongue and all that. But we know how this human nature goes. It's sneaky. It's deceitful. And mm -hmm. so... If by you reading the Jah word and you get the prompting of the Holy Spirit, so to speak, but you want to continue to be in disobedience and thinking that you're fooling Jah, well, then Jah might give you a falsehood, a false spirit, and you won't have the true the true spirit. And this is what I do believe, that you know, if, if someone is dealing with truth, then Jah is going to give them that spirit of truth. But if somebody's dealing with folly, then Jah is going to give them a spirit of folly. And I don't mean that you're just wrong in one area of doctrine. You know, people say, oh, Judge mm -hmm. or Sean, you, we like how you teach the calendar, but you know that J letter J thing and the Father's name and a lot of other things. It's not about that. I'm not talking about these little things, but I'm talking about the whole presentation of the ministry, how it's going to come forth. The Most High wants us to speak truth, so people are deceived. And the thing about this as well is that those people that listen to false teachers, they don't know that they're listening to false teachers either. It's like the blind leading the blind. 
and they think that they're listening to people that know what they speak of. But I want you to consider what I'm saying here. You know, it's very crucial. I ain't comp I I never said we're prophets of that nature. I don't even wear the title teacher and more that, you know, if I wanted to say it, that I could, but I don't, Messiah says something like, don't go around calling yourself these things. And usually when I see people doing that all the time, somebody could say, hey, Sean, you're a teacher, but I won't say, hey, I'm a teacher, I'm a moray. But I know some people that do that and say, I'm the teacher and I'm the moray. Boy, a lot of false prophecies. And if I get to it today, there's one brother that, you know, sad that it's an Israelite brother and even some Israelite sisters. I don't know what's going on, man. Mm. It's, it's deceptive, but my prayer is that, you know, they come out of these kind of folly things and don't follow your feelings. Let's continue. So what we're looking at here is, and this is the Anjaz Almanac. April 8th is the 30th day of Zif. Zif has 31 days. No significance on Jaz Almanac as, you know, eclipses don't have significance in anything outside of the, the traveling of the sun, moon, and stars above the earth. Well, this is when it's supposed to happen. And so we're up here, what? We got up, we're about what, eight days, seven, eight days? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eight, nine days. Mm -hmm. Now, it's unlikely that a false prophet or teacher will openly admit to being false, right? Instead, they will pose as a true minister of the Almighty. He will come as a wolf in sheep's clothing, as they say, and will speak fair speeches and false prophecies and do many miracles, maybe, even in order to deceive those he comes in contact with. Scripture. Matthew 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Mm. Ravening wolves means is that they come to you in sheep's clothing. Like, you know, a sheep is not is the is the prey. A wolf is a predator, right? And so when somebody comes to it, it's like, hey, you know, I see people come in, they teach the truth and everything. And next thing you know, they're all about, you know, filthy lucre or money and all of that, or they're about something else. So we got to be very careful that somebody's trying to prey on you. And this is why, you know, for us, I've always tried to say, like, I don't mind if people want to make donations and stuff like that. And you can do that. But I don't put, you know, on people that they must give us money and tithe and everything because it's not really about that. We've been giving things freely and, you know, we give it back. And we all know everybody needs support some way, this and that. But the truth of the matter is we want to focus on the message and that's all it's about. One thing to take note in verse 15, it says, beware of false prophets which come to you. These false prophets, they're going to be coming to you. They're going to be coming to me and us. You're not going to them. They're coming to you. So you have mm -hmm. to be able to discern when they do come, whether they're false or not, or we might end up being deceived by them. That's right. And Jah does say that you will know a tree by their fruits. That's right. Matthew 24, verse 24. For there shall arise false messiahs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, this, that's how great it can be when it comes to these understandings. Remember, great signs. Remember what wonders are. Again, great wonders could be something that somebody's just pointing to, like an eclipse. That's right. 2 Peter 2, verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the master that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. That's right. So we mm -hmm. got to be on our guard. And like I say, I know how it goes, you know. We say there's many false prophets, and then other people say from their angle, we're false prophets, so... This is where all of our work has to come in, the faith and the testing. And this is the world that we live in. We live in, this place is spiritually Babylon. It's confusion. But those who know the Messiah's voice or the Messiah's doctrine and the Messiah's truth, not the audible voice, but how his words and his truth is to be spoken, they will come. And they will know. And I don't mean they'll come to me. I mean, like, I know the Messiah's voice in the sense that I know to come to him. Right? And that's what we're all going to be doing that way. And again, when I say voice... Nothing about hearing a voice, but understanding the doctrine and truth and the spirit that is speaking uh, through certain individuals. Now, with this guy here, I'm just going to kind of go through a couple of these things quickly. You know, you've probably seen a lot of these videos. When I first kind of came on to figuring out what's going on, 
I watched this guy's video. We're not going to even watch it at all. I'm just going to talk about it quickly. But again, you hear people talk about this. Uh, the eclipse is going to make an X, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and there's going to be wherever the X is, that, that part there's called the rapture, city called rapture. I think there's somebody told me that it was like nobody lives there really, but it's like a small little town. And all of these towns of Nineveh and Salem and all of these kind of things trying to throw in there. Uh, I hear it's a bunch of lies still, and they're manipulating uh, the map for that reason. But nonetheless, you know, you've heard about, you know, the sign of Jonah. And they try to say this constellation that we're coming into is some series or something, which is the whale, some stupidness as well, looking up into the sky. So mm -hmm. I know, and from, from I seen this guy put out his things and you know, listen, everybody's sincere. They all say the same thing though. So we have to repent and we have to come back to the Lord and this is what it's about. And I can't knock that. We do have to repent. And like I said, if this helps people to repent and come to the most high, that's okay. But if it's they're only doing it because somebody told them about the solar eclipse, then that's gonna be, you know, that's gonna be washed away pretty easily, you know, once things come and go. Now, some people believe that a pleasant or personal supernatural experience or even natural phenomena in the sun, moon, and stars are a confirmation of their belief system and that such experiences are from the true creator. Moreover, because no physical harm came to them during the experience, they believe that they're in no danger. And although many people are in awe at eclipses or go through a religious or supernatural experience that may be, a, be, may be pleasant and seemingly harmless, it's very dangerous to automatically assume that the experience is from the Almighty One of Israel or one of His servants. And just because one feels that one has had a supernatural experience, such as a dream, people love to talk about their dreams or a vision, the appearance of an apparition, the hearing of a disembodied voice or some other astronomical experience with religious implications. They saw a shooting star, an eclipse. It doesn't mean that the experience or natural sign is from the true Jah or one of his servants. See, the word of Jah clearly says to test the spirits to see if they are of Jah or not. And that's what we have to do. So here's a serious warning. The Apostle John gave an extremely serious warning to the people of Jah about people who claim to be true servants of the Most High, but may not be. John instructs the children of Yah to put these people to the test to see if they are what they say they are. And although John's warning primarily speaks to people who are false prophets, his warning should also be taken to include other types of evil, such as the influence and presence of evil spirits. 1 John 4 verse 1. <clears throat> Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of Yah, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So we've been hearing this a lot. So we have to test the spirit. What does that mean? You test it to the doctrine of scripture. You put it to that test. Now, one thing, even as I uh, remember Brother Billy here, and we come to calendars, sometimes it's hard to put a calendar to a certain test, but you can't put the calendar to a scriptural test. But there'll be some things that, you know, you can't fully see in the scripture, but you'll see the principle of it. But nonetheless, when we're putting anything to the test, you, you know, testing a spirit, you got to search the scriptures, you got to pray for understanding to see, again, if this thing, if these things are true. Matthew 24, verse 4, And Jehoshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and shall deceive many. I know we read that already, but I just want to emphasize these things. So we put something to the test, that means... You know, the means by which the presence, quality, sorry, quality or genuineness of anything is determined, right? A trial of the quality of something, right? That's what you're trying to put it to the test. Or to prove, right? You have to prove all things. To establish the truth or genuineness of, as by evidence or argument. To establish the authenticity or validity of, right? Something. To give a demonstration by action to subject to a test, experiment, comparison, analysis, or the like. So we know what these words mean, but you have to really apply them diligently to the word. Because many people love the sun, moon, and stars and want to see these fantastic things happen. And 
as you know, Baal and Ashtaroth worship are a part of using the sun, moon, and stars for some special type of omens that way. And again, these are the natural phenomena of these things. We're not talking about the supernatural where Jah just intervenes. And like I said before, like you're on a sunny day, everybody's just cooling out, and all of a sudden it gets dark all over the world, right? And then you see a blood moon, so to speak, out of nowhere. So no constant, uh, sorry, no eclipses or anything of that nature are like gearing up to the big eclipse. That's not going to happen on an eclipse time, so to speak. Just going to do it on his time. Scripture. Jeremiah 10, verse 2. Thus saith Jah, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. That's right. The heathen are, you know, dismayed means to be either broken, afraid. You know, as Messiah said, don't be terrified, right? Don't be confused. All of those type of things. This is what it's about. And I know this verse is usually used for to shoot down the Christmas tree thing, but you can see that heathens are dismayed at them. Now, I don't mean to use this word and try to say that potential believers are heathen, but they might be following heathenistic ways and are caught up into their carnal mind. And so they have to come out of that because we scriptures say that we have to be spiritually minded, right? And we don't walk in the flesh. So everything is put to the test by the spirit through the scriptures. Script. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great an awesome day of Jah. That's right. So we know about this, you know, prophecy, and this is what many people are talking about. And as soon as you start talking about the eclipse, they go right here. This is, again, way in the future. And when it happens, it's not going to happen over one, you know, particular country even, never mind, just a part of a country. It's going to happen to all will be able to see these things and experience it, right? That's going to make the difference between Jah's power and the natural phenomena. Because people would just say, oh, that's an eclipse. Even when it really happens, they're going to say, oh, an eclipse we never predicted or something like that. But it'll be just power. Acts 2, verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith Jah, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before the, that great and notable day of Jah come. And it shall come to pass, that whosoever shall call on the name of Jah or the master shall be saved. That's right. Whoever calls upon him. Again, calling upon him doesn't just mean, hey, Jah. It means <clears throat> whoever calls upon him in faith and truth, right? Those who are living according to his ways of love. So all these things are going to be for the future. This has nothing to do with eclipses. So we read this part here, Joel 3.15, the sun and moon will darken. Luke, we read that, I think, signs in the sun and the moon. And in Revelation 8, you want to read that, Dean? Revelation 8, verse 12. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. So we can see a third part of like a 12-hour day would be um, four hours, right? And of the nighttime too. So that's eight hours off of your 24-hour day, which brings you down to 16-hour days, so to speak. So it's going to be really weird at that time. Remember, eclipses, solar eclipses, the longest they can last is maybe four and a half minutes. Right? There's they're not longer than that. And these things here are going to be happening for days, maybe even weeks at this time period here. So again, I just want you to look at things. We have our seals. You know, some people feel we're right here at the fifth seal and or you know we're people are saying because of these signs we're in the sixth seal but you know we're not up here just yet we've got a few more things to go on and i don't want to make this a lesson about the seven seals but i want to take a look at the trumpets once the seventh seal is opened you can see that trees are burned <clears throat> oceans 
turn uh, to blood, so to speak. The fresh waters become poisoned. And there's that one third of the stars being darkened. Then we have the bottomless pit angels, the two witnesses, Michael and Gabriel, come out as well, come down. Satan comes to the earth to do his thing. And that's going to be like the nitty gritty end times, so to speak. And I just want to focus again just to say, hey, these things got to come in play. You can't put a prophecy before another one or whatnot. You have to know the chronological and sequential events that occur. And when we do know that, we won't get messed up like many people are today. And it's good to chart these things out. Matthew 27, verse 45. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. Mark 15, verse 33. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. I'm sure you don't have to read that last one there, D, because it's just what we just read as, as well. But and I know Brother Billy brought it, brought it up. But again, mm -hmm. you can see this darkness over the land here for three hours. That's Jaws intervention. Yeah. Right? For three sure. Hours, long time. And you notice that it was for three hours, right? But here in Revelation 8, it says a third part was going to be darkened. So it's almost like what happened in Mark 15 is like a small little preview of what's going to be going on in the future. So again, looking at our trumpets, just read them, but we have the fourth trumpet, the third part of the sun, moon, and stars happen. So this is the second time that things happen. It's at the sixth seal that we also get another, um, we get the first sun, moon, and stars darkening. But that's not, we're not at that time period at all. So this gives you a good idea, then, again, of just of the, the things that may occur before we start talking about the exact end and everything. This is a full look at the seven seals. The seventh seal opens up into the seven trumpets. Then the seventh trumpet opens up to the seven vials or the seven plagues that are put upon the beastly kingdom. This is all going to be a part of that beastly kingdom, that three and a half year or that three year reign by uh, the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. But look at that. That's all way up there in the future. Right? And if you think the future is just down the road, then all right. Whatever it is, so it's down down there, and it's not that. And I don't care if you want to talk about Bitcoin and the economy of U.S. and all of these type of things. Those are like little minuscule uh, prophecies, so to speak. You have to start looking for the big, powerful ones that are the spiritual ones. <laughs> I mean, even, you know, my brother, you know, I like truth unedited. You know what I mean? You guys hear me talk about him quite a bit, and everybody's in their growth stage, but... You know, even him kind of getting caught up into the thing. He doesn't believe the three days of darkness and, and whatnot, but he does believe that this is a sign of the Most High. It's going to be some type of sign. and yeah. It's not. It's a natural phenomenon, right? And that's just the problem. And, again, I'm not shooting him down because, you know, he's kind of being, being humble about things. But, you know, people really think that this is, you know, something of the Most High because it's in America. I mean, we've had... A whole leap. Even remember the 2017 one that they said that happened as well? That mm -hmm. came and went. Some people back then were talking about, woo. But now, as time moves on, the hype is always going to be getting greater. I mean, there's yeah. going to be an eclipse, I think, sorry, the, an eclipse in the year um, 2030, a couple of them as well. And could you imagine how people are going to be making up a you know, <laughs> noise then, D? Yeah. Every eclipse from here on in, they're going to have something to say about it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But again, I still give Brother Truth um, respect, but why? You know, I don't know why man them thinking that this is a sign of the Most High. Just because of that X thing, that's that's not how we study Scripture. Scripture, Ezekiel, Ezekiel thirteen verse one, and the word of Jah came unto me, saying, "Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy." And say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts, Hear ye the word of Jah. Thus saith Jael, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. This is what happens to a lot of people. It says, you know, they prophesy out of their own hearts, their own mind, right? They follow their own spirit and say it's the most high spirit because they have a feeling. Oh. Oh, I feel it, you know, looking around and, you know, Yashirella, our, our salvation draws nigh. 
and we're they've warned. seen nothing. <laughs> see nothing from Ja. All they see is what's in their own mind. Continuing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. <laughs> Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of Jah. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, Jah saith, and Jah hath not sent them, and they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. That's right. So this is what's happening out here. People are saying, Jah spoke to me, Jah showed me in dreams. I hear all of these things coming from people's mouths so, so easily, man. Those to me are signs, great signs. I'm sorry if that's what they, and they, well, how do you know that the Most High never spoke to them? Because we know how he works. He tells us stuff like this that you're reading on the screen, that they'll say these things, but don't follow them. Wow. They've seen vanity and lying divination. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tell you, Dean. Continuing. Verse 7. Have ye not seen a vain vision? And have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, Jah saith it, albeit I have not spoken. Mm -hmm. So many people, like I say, you know, Abba Yah is showing them all kind of things in the dreams and praise Abba Yah, you know, for these things. Abba Yah told me and said this, Abba Yah never said anything to you. You made that up. And there's false prophets that taught these things. And I, you know, it's almost like I expect these things from certain Gentiles, you know, but to see what's going on amongst so-called Israelites, man, ah, man, it's disheartening. And I, I kind of get it, I guess. Everybody's hoping and all this time you're looking for our salvation, but and we got to endure to the end. We got to be patient and we got to be wise. You know, use our wisdom with these things. Verse 8, Therefore thus saith Jael, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore, behold, I am against you, saith Jael. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and the divine lies. Mm. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am Jael, because even because they have seduced my people, saying, Peace, and there was no peace. And one built up a wall, and lo, others dubbed it with untempered mortar. And what it is when it says that wall, untempered mortar thing is like that one person brings up the lie, and then a whole bunch of other people come by and you know add more verses to that lie, so to speak, and make it look nice. You know what I mean? Mm. But mm -hmm. now we're not talking about this piece here issue here, but again, vanity. Right? Some people will say, you know, peace and all of that, but we know sudden destruction comes very quickly. See, the story of lying spirits going from heaven to, to deceive Ahab's prophets into telling him lies, and also the prophecy of Ezekiel, shows that at the end of the age, the spiritual leaders of the people will be liars who deceive the gullible. And it clearly shows that they would be very that we should be very cautious about who and what one believes in reference to spiritual matters and prophecy. First Kings 22, verse 19. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of Jah. I saw Jah sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. So the hosts of heaven, as we know, are the angels. And Jah said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit and stood before Jah and said, I will persuade him. And Jah said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, Jah hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and Jah hath spoken mm -hmm. evil concerning thee. Wow. Wow. It says, Jah put a lying spirit in the prophets. This is amazing stuff. There's a lying spirit up there, right? That's right. And that's what's going on right now with this um, eclipse. is a lying spirit getting into people. That's right. That's what's happening here. Be very careful. And everybody's going to have something to say and wants to reach out and all of this and that. And, you know, 
I guess this time might come and go, and some people might say, okay, well, we did believe it. We thought it's coming, you know, let's regroup ourselves and see where we went wrong. But it kind of starts to show you where people's mind frame is at. Because all it would take is another little eclipse or something else to happen in the sky before people get back into that stupor again. And, uh, you know, it bothers me still. I'm going to lie, yeah. it bothers me. They just continually look for signs in the heaven. Meanwhile, their, their focus should be on the words of Jah. Yeah. And we see this all throughout the ages. Well, there's through Roman Catholicism, ancient Egyptian, ancient Babylon, you know, sun, moon, and stars, and using these things and looking towards them as something kind of like in some type of prophetical way outside of how Jah uses them. You can see that it leads people astray. I don't know if you saw this brother out here though, but you know, he's kind of like the main guy out there right now, and you know, pushing out pushing out things, and you can see that little X. Thing that he has uh, on the map and that's where mm -hmm. the paths yeah. of the eclipses come through and many people probably seen these things right i don't like to you know man personally still because you know sometimes i like how this brother reads he has like a when he's reading a scripture he has you know, good insights and stuff like that and he came out of christianity and all of that he said about 13 years ago the guy on the left i'm talking right and um he seems he's the guy who calls himself the more right and mm -hmm. um the glasses like, hmm yeah, the, the guy with the glasses. Yeah. yeah, he calls himself the Mori. But you know, when I watch him, I hear this here. You know, the end of the world talk, and he's made videos all up until today. You know, he does a lot of live streaming, and I don't know, man. I don't know, brother. It just kind of, I don't know, these men them getting people to look at these things and thinking that this, you know, relates to the Ta, and the other ones are the Aleph and the Ta, and. They try to mix in some paleo Hebrew pictograph business that is, as far as I'm concerned, is, is folly. Anyways, we should know about what um, eclipses, kind of the basics of them. This is a partial one. This is what you would call an annular with the yellow around it. And this is what you call a total. And I think this one is called, this one is a total. It looks like the only difference might be is that it maybe covers more and, and the the ring of fire, as they call it, or something like that, might be white as opposed to yellow, unless it's something that happens again throughout the year. Here's a little bit of a, a chart of you know their global Earth, how they map things out, and even on the left, all the various eclipses that have been going on since 2001 to 2025. Uh, this is all the eclipses and the cross paths that were going to happen everywhere else in the Earth. You know, for this 21st century, I mean, these things are predictable, man. <laughs> That's right. You know, very, very predictable. This is the one that happened in 2017. And, you know, this became a big thing because back then it was like it went through Salem and all these things are Salem. It's short for Jerusalem and and all of this and that. But apparently there's was, there was a lot of lying going on here. But this, as you can see at the bottom, is October 21st, 2017. And people thought it was something then. And then that came and went. And that was one of the most recent ones in the United States. And now that we have these crossover paths, I think this is the path for these ones now, the ones going right here. But look how many times things cross over, right? These are all kind of crossing over going on into the future. And so these are just regular things, brothers and sisters, regular things that you don't need to look at. I mean... You can look at them as, like I say, wow, you know, something that doesn't happen to us. You might see one in, in your lifetime. Well, that's it. Just a, a, something neat to look at that happens, but don't kiss your hand and, oh, give praise or anything like that, you know. Yes. Brother yes. Billy says, once again, worshiping the sun. That's it. That's, that's what's it. going on, Brother Billy. Mm -hmm. And even though people don't say, oh, bow down to the sun, and they don't bow down to the moon, say, oh, almighty oh, moon, listen. Any events that, especially if they're sacred events that you put as solar times or lunar times, is a part of heathenistic worship. And then, of course, if you're going to deal with prophetical things with the sun, you serve the sun, so to speak. You might not say, you know, AD, you know something? See, like Baal worship, mm -hmm. you read about in the scripture. And you can see that it was even amongst the Israelites, they worship Baal, and some of them worshiped Yah, Jah, the Most High, right? But yeah. the thing is, when they're worshiping Baal, it's like they're worshiping the sun, moon, and stars, but they still kind of keep the name of the deity that they're worshiping. Like it's Yahweh, Yahweh, Jah. They're still going to do that 
just like how people do today, use lunar calendars and all these false things, but still use the Most High's name, right? That's and so right. that's how false religion kind of works. It works that, you know, in prophecies, they're going to still use the name of the Most High, so to speak, and, and all of that. But, and as you can see here. That's right. They'll take pagan customs and put Jah's name on it. Yep. And this is kind of maybe last week. And so you see this X here, mm -hmm. right, the X? Well, the you know, from knowing a little bit about the Hebrew and the pictographs myself, you know, they're going to give the ta, some would say the tav, the ta, the V is, you know, not a V sound. And it, they say it's, it's either can be an X, X like here or a cross. Oh, and because um, you have, you know, the Aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew and ta is the end. This ta here is supposed to be representing the end. The right? end. And yeah, then... <laughs> <laughs> and then there's another, when they do another cross, you can see that they have the A, and I, I think I'll show that as well. And they say, well, that's what it, the Aleph and the Ta put together, meaning it's, no. it's the return of the beginning and the end. No, these guys are making stuff up. Making they're not stuff paying up. attention to what Scripture says. God tells us what the end and what's going to occur in the end. And they're disregarding all of that just yeah. because they want to see the last letter of the Hebrew um, alphabet as an X uh, hovering across some... Um, North America or America in particular, I tell you, these guys are deceived, yeah, if not false outright. If not, brother, sometimes it makes me wonder, man. Trust me, it makes me wonder. But, uh, I'm sorry, this let me see, go right back here. This is just another chart, not too special, but it's the paths of eclipse that are going to be coming up. And on the right hand side, if you want to click, uh, screenshot, whatever, you got all your dates, and so. You know, you can become you could become a prophet too to people who don't know things and just know a date and say, guess what? The sun moon darken and, and there you go. You got a, a, a small following. But we only have a few more minutes, so let me just quickly go through some things here. Um, Deuteronomy 18, verse 9. And when thou art come into the land which Jadael giveth thee. Thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto Jah. And because of these abominations, Jah thy El, doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with Jadael. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto, hearken unto observers of times and unto, divin, unto diviners. But as for thee, Jadael hath not suffered thee so to do. We see these things and we know that most of the heathenistic nations, they're the ones that kind of deal with these kind of Issues with the sun, moon, and stars. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 14, verse 14. Then Jah said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision, a divination, and a thing of nothing or not, and the deceit of their heart. That's right. Wow. And initially, the Most High is speaking to his Israelite people, but we know this goes also for the Gentile false prophets as well. Mm -hmm. See, these two women here, I don't know if they're called the daughters of Zion or, you know, something, but boy, do you know, it's hard not to like, because you want to lift up your people, you know? You want to say like, yeah, man, at least they're going to try, but, you know, brother, I guess they're trying, man. But it's so deceitful, and they lie, you know, and they, they t talk about their dreams, and then they cry, and they want the father to help them, and they ask for the son to help them, and they read up, quote up scriptures, and they're, you know, actually pretty diligent in their scriptural research, mm -hmm. but it's a spirit of error is there. You know what I'm saying, brother? Ah, and, spirit and, of error. That's and, right. And that's all I could say because, you know, they love dreams. And I know dreams is a thing that many people like to follow. And I'll say this. I have no problem saying the Christian world has many women dreamers, you know. And I know men pastor dreamers too. But even like just didn't have to be the pastors of 
the, the churches. But love follow dreams. And even if it is something about their life, to them, most high speaking to them about something, you know, and not, yeah. I mean, that's another lesson on, on what dreams are. Just Jah will give you dreams, but you have to know the difference, you know. And, um, and man, they're false, man. They're putting out some falsehood. They're, 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 I believe that they're true, sincere believers, but they're speaking in er areas and making people follow them. And it's not so. And talking about dreams and making up stuff and talking about this same solar eclipse thing. And it's right around the corner. And um, once, once you're leading, I don't know, brother, just people astray, then they're dealing with falsehood. All the false prophets were Israelites back in the in ancient times. We read in the New Covenant that there will be false teachers and prophets among you, among the assembly, amongst the body of believers, right? So these people are gonna gonna come up and rise up amongst our very own. That's right. And we have to discern. Mm -hmm. Let me finish off with a couple more verses here. I did. That's what it is. Our discernment has to be there, brother. It has to be there. Deuteronomy 13, verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For Jah your El proveth you to know whether ye love Jah your El with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after Jah your El and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he hath spoken to turn you away from Jah your El, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which Jah thy El commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I will say, and I won't, I won't, I won't make um, the wrong thing here and say that people I'm showing you making these prophecies about the eclipse are trying to lead you to another God because they're doing all things in the name of the Father and Son. I'm just saying beware. Beware. Right. All right, so you see, this is the, one of the brothers' latest ones. You see, like how we have this cross here again, the X. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look at now, they're showing you another uh, one that happened before a path. You notice it goes up here, down, and now we have an, an A, an Aleph. And this is why you say now the Aleph, and then the see the A, like <laughs> yeah, I see it. I see what the you're Aleph saying. Aleph and yeah. the Ta, you know, that these things here are, are basically signs of the end. You know, and because Russia has opened up their vaults to show you black Jesuses, and even though these pictures have been around for a while, but I don't know if you mm -hmm. saw a lot of the videos. Some of these pictures, like they say, it's they're dark, but they don't. You know, some of them don't look like black people still. Like a couple of them do. I, I haven't seen all of them, but uh, yeah, I'm aware. A couple of them do. Like I mean, even the one that's showing right here. I mean, I guess it looks more better than the blonde-haired, blue-eyed one. If that's what they're comparing it to, I get that. But it's artwork. But nonetheless, I mean, even this. That thing in Baltimore with the bridge breaking down, you know, people mm -hmm. are trying to put these together as a sign of the end of, of America. And I just don't I just don't see how they're doing these things, you know, brother man. Sign of the end of America, eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Putting it all together. So again, is this solar eclipse? Is it a true sign from the creator? Prophecy warning, I tell you, is no. It's not a true sign of the creator. It's not. It happens all the time. And if anything does happen after that, well, that's how it happens. It doesn't mean that this eclipse is a trigger for future events as a sign, as a warning, an omen, or anything. Nothing. It's just it captivated people's attention. The devil has put a very good twist on things and made it astronomical and sun worship and moon worship are going on. And you know, that, yeah. that, that's where we're at. Yeah. Where this is at? even... Um... This is this is even a tourist attraction. This is generating money. There's there's people hotels are booked in certain areas waiting to see this thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Big 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 money's going on right now. <laughs> you know, I want I want to show this term here, solarism. This is the interpretation of myths 
by reference to the sun, especially such interpretation carried to an extreme. That's what solarism means. It also means the explanation of myths in terms of the movements and influence of the sun. Mm. A solarist is one who tends to overstate the role of the sun in explaining the roots of mythology. And I would okay. even say scriptures. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. These are good. These are good definitions to, to be aware of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, these are terms that, you know, we're familiar with. And um, that's all I could, you know, not to say. Um, mm hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I have anything else to bring out except just more, <laughs> more shoot downs of, of you know prophets that way. But I, I do want to say all praise and glory to Jah our Father and His only begotten Son, Jehoshua the Messiah, who died for our sins, also known as Yahoshua, Yahshua, Yahusha, Yahawashai, Yashaya, Jesus the Christ, again who died for our sins that we may have eternal life. I hope you gotten some understanding from this lesson. And, um, you know, I, I put this lesson out today because I didn't want to save it till next week. Uh, I really don't think it's, you know, worthy for what I see coming up in terms of I want to next three Sabbaths are going to be focusing fully on um, Pentecost or the Feast of First Fruits, but in particular, the birth of the Messiah and everything surrounding the birth of the Messiah, the day, month, year. The prophecies of it. Uh, we'll talk. Look at the virgin birth greatly, because mm -hmm. people teach mm -hmm. either against that or for it. Um, the seed of David. Anything that deals with the birth of the Messiah will be covered greatly. We know when he was born, and a lot of people say, "Well, nobody knows, and nobody listened to that." Well, John knows. He showed us in Scripture, and it can be worked out through the Scriptures, and that's going to be a great marvel. So it's going to be a lot of information. Uh, just for our lives and all of your lives as well over the next uh, three Sabbaths as we get to Pentecost, the Feast of First Fruits, and we get to have that great time, and hopefully we get a little bit more of the Holy Spirit every year. That's right, because it was on the Feast of First Fruits that Jah gave the Holy Spirit to his disciples. That's right, and it was in the night of the Feast of First Fruits that the Messiah was born too. <laughs> Yeah, he was, Messiah was born in the third month. He's born in the spring, not in tabernacles or definitely not, you know, that Christmas folly. And, you know, I'm going to also show you, you know, a little bit about the Magi or the wise men, I should call them, who visited the Messiah. And everybody tries to make it Christianity. Even when it comes to the solar talk, you know, I just didn't want to bring it in today because I want to save it for later. But people think, you know, this is like this eclipse is kind of, is kind of like the same star that led the wise men to the Messiah in Jerusalem and to his birth and all of that stuff. But <laughs> man, that, that never, no star, no sky, it never led anybody anywhere. That's another astronomical false doctrine. It's like the heathen love the sun, moon, and stars. They're dismayed at them. So they're going to have an astronomical gospel that's based upon constellations, the Maseroth, or mm -hmm. however you want to call it, the Mazala, the Zodiac. doesn't even matter. We deal with scriptures and we let Jah's words be true and put them to the test. Thank That's you for listening. Right. Again, one love to all. Uh, I'll take a look a little bit at uh, if there's any comments or questions. Uh, yeah, yeah. Our area is supposed to double up. Yeah, even over where we are, I know some people are going. We have a, you might have heard, everybody heard of Niagara Falls. So it's it's going over Niagara Falls. So uh, all hotels are being, you know, booked. I even was hearing something about, um, my brother was talking the somewhere in I don't know if it's Nashville or something, but mm -hmm. you know, normally their rooms are one hundred dollars a night. Man is able to sell them off for one thousand dollars a night. Wow, <laughs> ten times, you know. So yeah, look at this money making thing. Go buy your glasses and whatever the money they can make yeah. off of these things. That's what they're gonna do. The churches are gonna milk you, make you bring in more money to the church, and yeah, turn it into a commercial event. Hmm. That's right. Yes, John, give thanks. Yeah, man, give I'm thanks. I'm not going to really address these kind of things anymore. I hope you got some understanding and, you know, don't expect nothing to happen, you know. I know yeah, you're man. saying, no matter where, some back here might, might be like, well, I mean, just there's that little. <laughs> yeah, Joshua said, uh, told us, don't be deceived. Don't, man. Mm -hmm. Yes, brother John, have a good week. 
All right. Well, once again, thank you. And unless there's other questions or comments. All right. Brother David, nice local work again today. Yes, Brother Sean. All the brethren and sisters, be strong. Keep the faith. Three more Sabbaths until the feast. Mm -hmm. The giving of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And also during this time, Joshua was showing himself alive after his resurrection unto the disciples for 40 right. days. That's right. We'll, we'll probably try to squeeze those th that talk in as well. There's a lot to talk in. That's why I want to take up, you know, three Sabbaths because I want to make sure the festival is covered and then everything calendrical and and post-Messiah and all of that to be covered. And those will be fantastic lessons, a lot of wonderful truths that you're never going to hear anywhere else except from the Zion of John Joshua. And we're very grateful and thankful. Amen. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody else. Bless up, Auntie Alma, uh, Carice, Janessa, Holy One, Billy, Dielectric Truth, James, so on and so forth. Thank you. Stay strong, fight the good fight, and just be love, right? That's right. Have a All good right, week, everyone. Bless up. Bless up, dear. Mm. All right. Okay. That's it. Have a good week. If you want to email me any questions, zionofja.com. Oh, sorry, at Gmail. Okay, take care. And one love. And stream. Thank mm -hmm. you.